Sunday. We're so glad that you're here as well. We hope and pray that you feel welcome. Uh, we are having a lunch immediately following the worship service this morning, which you do not have to stay for, but we have plenty of food. And so if you want to stay and you've RSVP'd for lunch this morning, we'd love to have you join us for lunch afterwards. But thank you all for being here today. The psalmist reminds us in Psalm 150, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. As we gather, let's join our hearts in prayer. God, we thank you for an awesome summer, for beautiful weather, for time to enjoy family and friends. We thank you for the project that we got going on in the sanctuary right now. We pray that it's finished soon. Uh, but we thank you here and now for this different time and this different space to gather together as your people to worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray that your spirit would be poured out upon us as we worship together and that your name would be glorified and that we would be blessed. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. People of God, receive God's greeting to you as we gather this morning. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. People of God, the Lord be with you. And also with you. All right, God has greeted us. We're going to do something a little bit different for our mutual greeting this morning. Uh, you are around tables, so we want you to go around your table, say your name, and then in one sentence or less, <laughs> one sentence or less, say one fun thing that you are doing this summer. Ready, set, go. <laughs>
Amen. It's awesome singing down here. I thought for a second we were going to break out and start dancing and circling. But well, we got the clap going, so that's good. For prayers of the people, we're going to do something a little bit different. Here at Calvary Christian Reformed Church, we believe in the power of prayer. And as a covenant community, we're very committed and faithful in praying for each other. And so this morning, we have the opportunity to pray together with other people in our covenant community. So this is how the structure is going to be. You also have the directions on your table. But you will pray for the person on your right. So you only have to remember what one person says and pray for them. Okay, so don't stress out. Don't worry. And we're going to go around the table and we're first going to share. Each person is going to share these three things. They're very basic, very simple. Share as much as you feel compelled to share. Number one, I thank God for something. Number two, I need the Spirit's power. So kind of like a prayer request. And then number three, a prayer for a ministry of Calvary. So for example, and praise team, we're going to do this up here as well. For me, I would say I thank God for worship in the gathering place. So I think this is really cool. It's kind of like early church life, which is fun. Number two, I need the Spirit's power to be a dad, to raise Blakely in the Christian faith. So that's what I would request prayer for. And then number three, I would ask for prayer for the Summer of Prophets as we uh, study Nahum this afternoon. So that's kind of examples. And so you're going to go around your table and share and then start praying when everyone has shared. And then kind of after a good time of prayer, we're going to start singing our next song. Ready, set, go. For the children's message, I'm going to ask all the kids to come and join me right here on the stage. So it might be a little tight, but we'll make it work and we'll have fun with it. So kids, come on up and join me. It's the shortest commute to a children's message I think we've ever had. That's awesome. <laughs> we can move that stand. Just don't run away with Pastor Nick's notes. All right, guys. Can any of you tell me what this is? Yeah. Trowel. Wow. You knew what it was called. That's amazing. It is a trowel. What do you use a trowel for? Does anybody know? Yeah. Digging. Digging, yes. So what, what do you do like when you dig? What do you dig for? What do you gold. You... <laughs> if you find any gold in your backyard, let me know. Yes, you can use it to kill ants. Any other uh, ideas what you use this for? So lots of good reasons. Usually I use it to dig, to either dig weeds out or to dig and put flowers in. And the Bible teaches us that God commands us to care for his creation. So, I have uh, two objects for you, so that's the first visual, and we'll get to the second visual here in a second. But after God formed Adam and Eve and breathed life into them, this happened in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. It says, God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. <clears throat> Fill the earth and subdue it. So a part of that command is to care for creation, to pull weeds, to put flowers in, to water the grass, to trim trees. Because without that care, creation would get overgrown, and God wants us to care for it. But there's more to that command than just caring for creation, which brings out my second item. Does anyone know what this is? Yeah. It's a computer. Very good. I'm going to open up. Oh, my connection was interrupted. All right, that's good. Here we go. Does anyone know what website this is? Google. Google, yes. 
What do you use Google for? Looking up stuff that you don't know. Yes, looking up stuff that you don't know. Any other ways you guys use Google? Do you Google things already? Okay, maybe you ask your parents to Google things. So yes, you can look up stuff you don't know. And you can almost find anything on Google. There's a lot of good ideas. There's a lot of helpful tips. You can learn a lot on Google because it encompasses pretty much everything in the universe. You can learn about, yes? But it's not my name. <laughs> I don't know, it depends on privacy. <laughs> <laughs> so when God told us to fill the earth and subdue it, he meant more than just care for creation. He meant to be creative. And we can be creative in just about anything. We can come up with good ideas. We can share helpful tips. We can learn about history and science and math and architecture and music and sports and all of these wonderful things. So we can reflect God's image by being creative in just about anything. When it honors God, when we care for his creation and bring goodness to this universe. So that's a way that we can be creative and reflect God's image. And my prayer for you guys is that as you continue to grow up and learn about all these different fields, you can contribute to whatever vocation or whatever area of life that you're called to bring. And you can reflect God's creativity in whatever path that God has called you. So that is my prayer for you guys. People of God, what is our prayer for these children? May the Lord be with you. Amen. You guys can head back to your tables. Thank you. Our scripture, uh, scripture reading for today is Genesis. Please follow along on the screen to read your Bibles. Hear the word of the Lord from Genesis 126 through chapter 2, verse 1. Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish in the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds of the air, and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth, and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And all the beasts of the earth, and all the birds of the air, and all the creatures that move on the ground, everything that has breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus, the heavens and the earth were completed in all their past array. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Jason. Would you pray with me? God, what a great morning. We thank you for this time and this space. We thank you for your word, and we pray now that you would open it, our hearts and our minds and our ears to it. We thank you for this journey that we've been on as a church this summer, learning about who you are and learning about how you want us to look like and be like you. I pray, Lord, that this series has shown us, revealed to us more about how we can be your presence, your image in this world. God, we pray for the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit as we conclude our sermon series here today. Make us more like you, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as many of you know, for the last 11, 12 weeks, since May 2nd, we have been looking at the communicable attributes of God. We've been looking at the ways that God has created us to be like Him. 
And we've also been talking about how when we reflect these images, when we reflect these ways that God created us to be like him, we, are, we flourish. We are more fulfilled. We bring God glory. And when we live into that design that God created us uh, to be, we flourish as human beings. And I'm hoping and praying that as we've journeyed through these series and looked at these different attributes of God that we are called to reflect I'm hoping and praying that these attributes convicted you of certain things, called you to do certain things, that you learned certain things, and I'm guessing that all of you were blessed in different ways as we journeyed through this series. But when we planned this series, uh, there was a communicable attribute of God that was not part of this book. The book, as we talked about last week, concluded with God most wise, And we thought it would be appropriate to include this communicable attribute that we don't often learn about or hear about. It's an attribute of God that is seldom listed in the the books of theology. And yet, as we heard in our scripture passage today, it is the fundamental way before the fall that God created us to be like him. I'm talking, of course, about the creativity of God. The Bible, of course, is God's revelation to us about himself and about his plan of redemption. And the very first thing that we learn in scripture about God is that he is a God who creates. God is a creator. He is fundamentally creative. He creates beautiful things. He brings life. He brings order. He makes new things. He creates something from nothing. Whether we realize it or not or affirm it regularly or not, one of the central things that we learn from the Bible about God and the world is that God is the creator and we are the created. Dorothy Sayers once said that if all we knew about God was the first five words of the Bible, all we would know about God is that he is a creator, a creative God, a God who makes things. In the beginning, God created And the very next thing that we learn about from the Bible is that after God creates, or that when God creates, he makes something out of nothing. Genesis makes sure that we understand not only that God is a creator, but that out of this vast, formless void, God creates something from nothing. So God, we learn, not only is a creative God, but he's the kind of God who makes new things from nothing. He brings life out of nothing. And not only these things either, but we also see that God fills the world and as he creates more and more things and fills the earth, as he brings order to all the chaos, every time he creates something, he sees what he has made and he calls it good. So God not only creates, he not only creates something from nothing, he sees what he has made and he declares it good. We have a God who creates, we have a God who creates something from nothing and we have a God who creates beautiful things. A God who creates good things. A God who imagines good and beautiful things and then speaks them into being. And of course, each day of creation, he calls it good. But unlike all the other things that God creates, when God gets to us and creates us, there's something different in the story that happens. He not only creates us and calls us good, but verse 28, he gives us something to do. He doesn't give anything else in creation something to do. This command, this idea about filling the earth and subduing it is not only about having kids. Filling the earth and subduing it is about being co-creators with the creator. 
So the story in Genesis 1 and 2 goes like this. God creates a world. He fills it with all kinds of good things. And at the end of the creation story, he creates a creature to keep creating. Verse 28 is about being culture creators. It's about filling the earth, yes, with children, but more broadly speaking, this verse is about filling the earth with life. Filling the earth with goodness, filling the earth with culture, with beauty, with economy, with business, with art, with music, with structure, with buildings and architecture, with holidays and traditions. I suspect that when many of us think about being culture creators or making culture or doing cultural things, we think that those things are for the artists and the musicians. Those are for the elite people, not for me. But I want to submit to you this morning that all of us as human beings reflect the creativity of God on a daily basis. Whether we are making things, building things, renewing things, fixing things, solving things, participating in things, leading things, helping things, growing things, we are all reflecting the creativity of God on a daily basis. We miss this about the, about, about the biblical story. The Bible begins in a garden and ends in a city for a reason. Because God created us to fill the earth to fill the earth with all sorts of things that we create. The story of the Bible, the story of Jesus coming to renew and restore all things assumes that we are doing what God created us to do from the beginning. Fill the earth. Fill it with good and beautiful things. Care for the earth. Cultivate the earth. To be like God is to work, to make things, to do stuff. We were designed to do stuff, to care for stuff, to make stuff. This past week I was going for a bike ride and I was going around Normandale Lake and there was a concert band that was practicing. This wasn't the concert itself, but there was a concert band that was practicing and so I stopped with a few other people to listen to them practice. And I found out later that this is the Concert Medalist Band, a group of unpaid volunteers who come together to make music. And I stopped to, to listen to them for a few moments, and, and when I stopped, the director was making the band start over from the same spot in the middle of the song over and over and over again. It was clear that they were trying to fix something. And they must have played the same section of the same song a dozen times in a row. And when they finally got it the way the director wanted, he yelled out for everyone to hear, Yes! That desire, that drive to make beautiful and excellent things, to create things, to make beauty, to bring order out of chaos, to build things, to systematize things, to make sense of things. All of these things are us fulfilling our purpose as co-creators with God. God created us to make good and beautiful things, to make excellent things, To make things that we look at ourselves and we say, that is good. To make beautiful music, to build strong buildings, to plant beautiful gardens, to create software, to write computer programs, to engineer machines, to teach and train minds, to design, to be active. We are this way. Because we were created in the image of a creator. We were created in the image of God who made something from nothing and he called it 
good. And I wonder if all of us underestimate how much we reflect the creativity of God on a daily basis. In our workplaces, at our schools, in our homes, in our yards, with our hobbies and our recreational activities. So, as we conclude this sermon series on being image bearers of God, and since we are around tables this morning, and since we are learning about being creative, I'd like each of you to think for a moment about how you are creative like God. I want you as an individual to think for one minute about the ways that you and the things that you do reflect the creativity of God. Whether it's in your work, at your school, with your hobbies, and your recreation, in what ways do you create? Where and when do you build things? Do you make things, fix things, order things, help people or things to grow? In what ways do you use your imagination? What hobbies do you have where you are making something, enjoying something, cultivating something? For example, for me, I write new sermons every week, and I try to be creative in the ways that I communicate the grace and truth of God's word. At home, I wanted to make a bigger backyard, so I built a retaining wall so that I could bring out my yard a little bit further. And also, with the help of my father-in-law, I'm redoing my deck this summer. And finally, I love, for those of you who've been to my home, you know that I love to grill and to make good food for my family and friends. I want you to think for one minute about how you reflect the creativity of God in these ways, and then you're going to share one, two, or three examples around your table. So I'm going to give you one minute to think, and then we'll go, to get, go together in our tables. Let's think. All right, I see a lot of good thinking going on. Let's go to our tables and share one, two, or three things. That's about 30 seconds per person about the ways that you reflect the creativity of God. Yeah. Well, I don't really want to cut us short, but we've got to end this sometime. But it is a joy to see all of you sharing about all the different things that you do. Uh, so thank you all for taking the time to share with one another and being open with one another because I do think that one of the biggest roles that we have as Christians, whether we realize it or not, one of the biggest roles that we have is, is pointing to God with all the different things that we do and, and giving Him glory with, our, with the things that we do in our workplaces, with the activities that we do in our homes, with our study at school. Our job as Christians is to point to God as the source of all life and all beauty and all creativity. He is the reason I want us to see today. He is the reason that we love beauty. He is the reason that we enjoy learning things. He is the reason that we enjoy designing things, fixing things, growing things. And God did not create us to do all these things to bring glory to ourselves. That's what the world wants us to do, to point at ourselves and say, look at me, look at what a good job I do, look at the beautiful things I can make. No, our job as Christians is to point people to give God glory in all the different things that we do. Now, I do also want to acknowledge this morning that, that many people get frustrated with the church because the church of Jesus often fails to connect what we all do Monday through Saturday with the faith that we celebrate and worship God with on Sunday. The church of Jesus Christ, because we have this important mission of proclaiming the good news of, word, of Jesus in word and in deed, we sometimes don't do a very good job of connecting our faith with our work. And so I want you to hear me loud and clear this, clear this morning that what all of you do Monday through Saturday outside this building matters. Your teaching matters. Your engineering matters. Your gardening matters. Your computer programming matters. Your health care matters. Your accounting and financial help matters. Using our gifts 
is fulfilling what God created us to do. And so we bring God glory, especially when we point at him as the source of all things good and beautiful. But of course, I do want to also acknowledge that we as Christians often wonder, what does all of this then have to do with Jesus, our Savior, our Lord? What does all this creativity stuff and and redeeming creation, what does that have to do with Jesus? Paul, in Colossians 1, addresses this very question. Paul says in Colossians 1 that Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things were created. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. What's Paul saying? Well, first, Paul's got all this creation language that he uses here. And so in Colossians 1, Paul is bringing us back to the creation story when we were made in the image of God. And he's saying that Jesus came to bring us back to that image bearing. To make us, once again, fully human. To restore what was lost. He came to restore us to the image bearers that we were designed to be and to show us what it means to be created in the image of God. So Paul uses this creation language because he's pointing us back to the creation story and showing us how Jesus restores what was lost. Jesus didn't only come to save us from our sins. He came to make us fully human, to restore us to what we were created to be. So God is not only our creator. He is not only the God who creates good and beautiful things. He's our creator, but he's also our redeemer. He's a sovereign restorer. He is savior and he is Lord of all the things that we do. Amen. And thanks be to God. Let's join our hearts in prayer. God, we thank you so much this morning for creating us in your image. For giving each and every one of us gifts and talents to fill the earth with good things, to make beautiful things, to fix things, to restore things, to care for and cultivate things. God, we pray this morning that we would be faithful to the way that you created us and we pray that we would do it all giving you glory and putting our hope and truth in the one who restores us to who we were created to be. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and sing together.
Thank you all for being here today. What a great morning. And our great morning is going to continue with lunch after we sing the doxology. God, after a year of being separated from each other, worshiping at a distance, singing with masks on, we thank you that we can be together, talk together, share together, break bread together. God, may your Holy Spirit continue to bless this place, bless our time, and bless our conversations with each other. And now we pray, bless this food to our health and our strength. In Jesus' name, amen. People of God, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace, both now and forevermore. And everybody said, amen. Amen.